designated for an R2 that's adjacent to the property to the west and shown in pink. We will then transition to 66.45 acres of medium density R4 that is in purple, and then 43.66 acres of, to R8 that's in green. We feel that this is an appropriate transition from low density to medium density, then to the approved subdivisions east of the property that I will touch on in my next slide. I would also like to note that within all of our three zoning designations, we're not asking for any exceptions or variances. We're gonna be meeting the zoning requirements for each zone. Next slide, please. In this slide, we really wanted to highlight that transition from our development application into the approved existing subdivisions. You can look at the R2 um, transition, transitioning to the R4, then to the R8. And we think that it blends perfectly into the approved subdivisions to the east of us. Next slide, please. The other item I wanted to highlight um, is that really this site is in the center of the valley. It's minutes from everywhere. With the, time, the 10 mile interchange has really transformed this area, making it, again, minutes from your downtown core, eight minutes, um, 10 minutes to the Nampa Garrity interchange, 17 minutes to your downtown Boise or to downtown Boise, and minutes from to anywhere in Meridian. Next slide, please. Timing um, after approvals, um, we are estimating to begin in 2021, paving the summer of 2021, and home building starting around that same time. We don't estimate first occupancies to um, be until 2022 early. Next slide, thank you. Utilities, pressure irrigation. Um, we have a private system with sufficient water rights. Water um, will be consistent and meet the standards of the Meridian um, Water Master Plan and water is in lender. And sewer is consistent with the Meridian Wastewater Master Plan. Next slide, thank you. Within each community that Toll Brothers builds, open usable space is extremely important. It sets our foundations for our community's amenities, pathways, and interconnectivity that makes our community special. Here in Cedarbrook, we have designated 20.78 acres, 17.5% equally distributed open space for our community. This can be seen in our main common area, our pocket parks, but also in the landscaped islands and detached sidewalks that we have throughout the site. Next slide, please. Extensive coordination has been done with all outside agencies. We have had held multiple pre-application meetings with the City of Meridian to hone in on the perfect site plan. We've also met with the school for West Ada. We met with Meridian Police. We met with Meridian Fire. And we have coordinated and worked with ACHD. And we were in full agreement with our staff report. Next slide, thank you. We also have provided extensive community outreach with the surrounding and adjacent neighbors. We have held three neighborhood meetings. We had two last year and one um, earlier this year. We have also worked closely with our adjacent neighbors. And the map shows in red all the neighbors we have personally reached out to. This outreach includes meeting with the majority of the surrounding neighbors on the project to address our project and their individual needs in person. Some of the neighbors address concerns with their view shed. We hired a consultant to take pictures of each neighbor's backyard and view and then produce renderings of how the development will impact their view. We sent out the renderings to the neighbors for feedback and worked closely on their individual needs concerning mitigation. Next slide, please. Here's an example of one of the renderings that we did. This is for the Lens property. And it shows you um, our community built out, landscaping. But what it also shows you is that it doesn't impede their view shed. Um, a lot of the home, adjacent homes are at a higher elevation and we're a lower. So, um, but this gives you a great example of the communication um, that we ha had have with the adjacent neighbors. Next slide, please. 
um, excuse me. One of the things that after we assessed everyone's comments and concerns from the neighborhood and individual meetings we had, we were able to commit to the following mitigation measures. Transitional de density was a topic during our neighborhood meetings and that we want to address and we feel like we have with R2 um, zone. These are transitional estate lots that range from 16,000 to 24,000 square feet. Dark sky lighting was a pri priority for the neighbors and something that we are providing. We had several stub roads that the neighbors were concerned about, including that mid-mile collector at the northwest, northwest corner of our site, and those have been removed. Um, separation um, was a big concern of the neighbors, and we have committed to increasing our um, rear setbacks in the R2 zone from 15 to 30. So we're gonna be doubling our rear setbacks. One of the things wasn't very popular was the um, white vinyl fence that we had proposed um, in the renderings and the neighbors really didn't like it. So we um, have committed to doing a wood style privacy fence. And again, we're um, committed to reducing our homes um, to two story homes in locations that would impede um, our neighbor's view shed. Next slide, please. Our pathway connectivity and walkability are a priority for Cedarbrook. As seen in our pathways exhibit, red shows a regional pathway that um, is gonna be dedicated to the city of Meridian. Yellow shows um, all of our detached sidewalks that we have throughout the site. And the blue shows the internal pathways owned and maintained by the HOA. We closely coordinated with Kim Warren at the city of Meridian on these pathway locations to ensure that they meet the city of Meridian's long-term regional pathway goals. We have 4,600 feet of regional pathway being um, designated plus 3,000 feet of the HOA pathway for a total of 7,600 7, feet provided in our project. Also the pathway located in the Northeast section of the site is along the Calkins lateral. We have requested a waiver to leave that, this lateral open to allow it to be a water feature adjacent to our pathway system. Next slide, please. Cedarbrook will meet and exceed the city of Meridian's amenity requirements by maximizing all the ample open space by incorporating the following. We'll have a pool, a pool house, a main playground, sport, car, sport court, pocket parks, and benches along the pathways. Next slide, please. Here's a beautiful view of um, the, po the pool that we'll be providing. Next slide, please. Another great shot. Can't wait for summertime. Next shot, please. And here's some more additional renderings. Sonia did mention in the staff report that she wanted to see us to incorporate an additional playground and we are more than happy to accommodate that requirement. Next slide, please. So now I would like to address our wonderful product types. Cedarbrook will offer a wide variety of housing opportunities from starter homes to larger estates. This one here is the garden collection and it will be within the R8 zone. This will range from 1200 to 2500 square feet these homes will offer functional living space and design. Next slide, please. The Woodland Collection, there'll be a lot of it you'll see in our R4 zoning. This housing option will range from 1,600 to 2,900 square feet. This collection specializes in open floor plans and quality craftsmanship. Next slide, please. And our Countryside Collection. These will be, you'll see these homes in our R2, our estate homes. This offers um, a, a larger home ranging in 2,900 to 4,500 square feet. The countryside collection embodies elegance and luxury with top of the line finishes. Next slide, please. And this um, is our single family townhome attached. Um, again, Sonia's staff report recommended we provide an additional um, residential product types to our site. So we were able to um, incorporate this attached townhomes within our northeast corner of the property. We feel that this is a great location and a great addition for our um, project. Next slide. And that brings me to the end. Um, again, we are so excited to be able to present this to you guys this evening. Um, we thank you for all your time and thoughtful consideration. 
and respectively request a recommendation of approval to council. And I'll stand for questions that you may have. Thank you. Thanks, Sabrina. We appreciate your presentation. Are there questions for the applicant? Mr. Chair. Mr. Seal, go right ahead. Um, I'll ask on the pond again. Um, is, is the pond something that you guys have your heart set on? Chairman, Commissioner Seal, um, I believe, yes, we do need to have the pond. It's gonna be for irrigation purposes, as well as aesthetics. Um, we do understand the concern of safety and um, we, in our ponds that we have built in Meridian and throughout the Valley, we have um, what's called a safety bench on all the ponds. These are um, five feet or a foot down and five feet wide. So it's like a step down so that if a kid did fall in the pond, um, there's safety precautions. It's not an immediate drop. Okay, and then on the, the uh, lateral is, I mean, are you guys, it sounds like you're wanting to leave that open instead of cover it. Can you, I mean, same thing as far as safety is concerned there. I mean, not that I wouldn't want to see that as part of the beautification, but I'm always concerned yeah. when things like that are left open. Yeah. Chairman, um, Commissioner Sill, I believe that we um, will fence that. It'll be open, um, iron probably, I'm assuming, style fence. But yes, for safety measures, that lateral, we will um, have fenced. Okay, thank you. Additional question for the applicant? Mr. Chair? Mr. Castanelli, go right ahead. Uh, Sabrina, did you consider at all um, layouts with R2 along the, the full western uh, border, including that uh, kind of that, that half moon shape on the southwest, mm -hmm. butting that property down there off Amity? And Chris, can we go back to the slide so we can have the plan in front of us so we can take a look at what Mr. Castanelli is mentioning? Thank you. Um, Chairman, um, Commissioner Casnelli, we um, have not looked at that. Um, we felt that the R2, that was a, a good transition point based on the comp plan. And that was the location we had um, ended the zone at. Well, Commissioner Casnelli. Uh, that's all, thanks. Commissioner Holland, you look like you're getting ready, ready to ask. I'll just give you, no? Okay. Any additional questions right now? Okay. Sabrina, we appreciate it. Thank you and your team. Uh, we'll come Thank back you. to you with uh, additional questions and allow you to close. That sounds wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Madam Clerk, do we have uh, folks on the line, I would guess, to testify? Chair, we have four people signed up, um, the first of which is Annette Alonzo speaking on behalf of a homeowners association, uh, the Southern Rim Coalition. Okay. Yeah, this is Annette Alonzo. I'm at live at 2204 East Hyper Drive in Meridian, and I am representing the Southern Rim Coalition. Um, I think that all of us agree that annexation into the Meridian, it, it should be set at a higher bar. And we need to ask, is this development good for the city of Meridian? Can it provide all the necessary services to all of the residents? And is just good enough standard for approval? I, I just don't know that that's right, a recommendation to city council. Um, first of all, I'm gonna start with the buffer to the estate lots on the south and the west property line. And um, these lots, the lots that are bordering this are five to 10 acre parcels. And there's been a lot of discussion within the city government um, in the necessity of the proper buffer zone and density transition from these estate lots to the new higher density developments. And in this situation, we believe it's appropriate to ask for a minimum of a half to one acre lots starting at lot 14 block four, which is down on the southern, the southeastern portion of that which pretty much starts at one of the larger estate lots um, and running west and diagonally and then north along the property line um, to the Stetson Estates. Um, and then all the way north to block, lot six, block one. I think that's what it is at the far north 
western side. The neighbors we've spoken to would also like to see a buffer berm and fencing along the property line. In this instance, of course, vinyl fencing would not be appropriate. And I heard Sabrina say that they had changed that to wood. Um, as a, sometimes the estate lots burn their fields and vinyl fencing is just gonna melt. And we believe this, is, this should be discussed with the landowners on the larger lots to decide what they want. And apparently that has already been covered. It, we hadn't seen that in any of the documentation yet. Um, Density and open space, the stack recommendation to increase the density to higher end of the MDR is totally opposite of what the comp plan, stakeholder survey and goals of the objectives um, call for. The MDR allows for a large range of density. And since this application is adjacent, adjacent to a rural estate properties, the developer should come in at a low end of the range of the allowed density and lot dimensions but the high end of the open space and amenities. That should be part of the appropriate transition. And although this development meets the minimum requirements for the city of Meridian over 10% for the open space, there's, there's really not a whole lot of space in that R8 area for the children to play. There's no open space within the R8 whatsoever, but little triangular pieces that appear to be at the end of where the lots were. If you'll notice in that R8, there's really no open space within there within phase six or phase four. I'm sure they could walk down to the pool, but in reality, those are the ones that are gonna be using that area the most. And, and the pool is a nice amenity. However, it could only be used for four months of the year. And then that area is closed off. The pool deck and the pool are closed off. So in reality, four months, that area is not gonna be able to be used. The pond is also nice in concept, although it is only the idea is it really is for irrigation, but the children can't play on that. And the pond itself takes up 25% of their open space. And that's put in the staff report. Um, let's see, it says, uh, see, I'm losing my place here. The Meridian Fire Report states um, that current resources would not be adequate to supply service to, a propose, to the proposed project because of the risk factor, which includes an open waterway. Water rescue teams would have to be mutually aided from another department. I think that's a major red flag for us here with obviously there's gonna be a lot of children in this development. And I think that pond is a detriment where it's placed right now. It should be placed if it's gonna be used for irrigation purposes, should be placed somewhere where it can be fenced out of the way of, of the children playing. Um, of course, the main, main thing are our West Ada School District. Our schools are in crisis due to severe overcrowding. The school district has chosen not to hold the bond election for the time being, which would have provided for the construction of the Blue Valley Elementary School near Overland and Linder. This has been pushed out indefinitely. And approving this application at this time lowers the bar for educating our future leaders in Meridian. Grossly overcrowded classrooms and busing students out of their neighborhoods devalues our Meridian's quality of life and devalues Meridian's reputation. Other proposed new schools in the area are not slated until 2024 to 2026. That's up to six years from now. And that's if the bonds are set forth and approved. Uh, this development, according to Joe Yoakum with the West Ada School District, which I spent a lot of time with on the phone, and I actually sent a report to City Council on this as well. Um, it'll add approximately 264 children to the system. And with the current approved new construction, which Toll Brothers pointed out those new constructions, that is approximately 1,053 homes, not including this 334 homes. So that's going to add right now the capacity of the schools, the, the capacity that's left right now without all these new developments coming on, there's a capacity for 649 kids between Mary McPherson, Siena, Victory Middle and Meridian High. And there are 800 and some children, 886 children proposed, including these. I, I don't know where we're gonna put these kids. I mean, we're gonna over capacity our schools by 200 children after some of them are already over capacity. You know, I think, you know, we appreciate you guys allowing us to talk on behalf of the coalition. And, and it's not that we disapprove of this development with some improvement to the plan. It's just, you know, we're concerned citizens. And I think 
it, it's not no, but it's not right now. And with this lift station, that this gravity station they're going to have to put in for the sewer, not having the lift station there, I think crossing over Linder just creates a whole nother can of worms that I'm not sure the city wants to get get into. You know, um, I think in the staff report it says that um, that, that with the master plan it says. The slow progression, I'm paraphrasing this, the slow prog progression of city limits by discouraging fringe area development and encouraging development of vacant or underutilized parcels currently within the city limits. Um, and it says this is not a priority area for Meridian Services. So why would we approve 334 houses when our schools can't handle it, our sewer can't handle it, we need a lift station? I, I just... I, I think it's too much at the wrong time. So I appreciate you guys allowing me to speak and if you have any questions for me, let me know. Thank you, Ms. Alonzo, we appreciate it. Excuse me, uh, any questions from, the, uh, from commissioners? Thank you, ma'am. We appreciate you being part of it tonight. Um, Madam Clerk, who is next on our list, ma'am? Mr. Chair, we have Julie L. Uh, representing Stetson Estates Homeowners Association. Okay. Julie, I see you are chimed in and please unmute yourself if you haven't. Or maybe Chris can unmute you. There we go. Julie, can you hear us? Yes. Okay. Um, we appreciate you being here tonight, and we know you're representing an NHOA, so we'll give you a little bit of additional time. Uh, please introduce yourself and your, give us your address for the record, and the floor is yours, ma'am. Great, thank you. Thank you to the commissioners for, uh, for allowing us to uh, comment on this application. My name is Julie Langloy. I live, live at 3556 Rustler. It is more than difficult to testify about an application that was still being revised today. As numerous other residents and neighborhood advocates have testified previously regarding other applications, it is discourteous to your resident stakeholders to ask us to testify about applications that have not been complete for 10 to 14 days prior to a hearing. These are land use decisions that will directly impact our neighborhood identities and our property's market values. An application that is a moving target leaves little time for residents to thoughtfully review and discuss. However, this application has had glaring flaws, pres flaws present in its every iteration, proving it is not worthy of annexation approval. The ink is hardly dry on our new comprehensive plan, a plan that is, that is the painstaking result of stakeholder surveys thousands of staff and steering committee hours and the city's sizable monetary investment. That guide to our future growth clearly states the following pertinent Meridian goals and objectives. Preserve prime farmland within the area of city impact to maintain rural character and provide opportunities for local produce and continued farming operations. Encourage the continued use of land for farming near area of city impact boundaries to effectively transition from rural uses to urban. Slow the outward progression of the city's limits by discouraging fringe area development and to support appropriate agriculture operations within the area of city impact. We are here tonight to echo those goals that are so important to the residents of Meridian as you deliberate over whether this application supports those goals. We contend this application does not support those goals and objectives, and therefore it is not in the best interest of the city to approve it. The Cedarbrook subdivision is an enormous opportunity to support the spirit and intent of Meridian's comprehensive plan and to manage growth that will complement and enhance the quality and character of Southwest Meridian, yet it fails on several levels. Annexations are important decisions, and we believe the timing is wrong for this one. These 334 homes will tax our city's ability to provide services. We also believe this development should complement and build on Southwest Meridian's rich rural culture, practices, and identity. This development should respect and enhance our area's natural assets and resources by maintaining view sheds, providing a generous transition to neighboring rural properties, protecting our existing farm practices, 
like processing cattle in our fields, and by incorporating architectural elements that honor and celebrate Southwest Meridian's proud rural story. We believe this application should be denied. However, should you consider its approval, the new comprehensive plan calls for legacy neighborhoods. This land use decision should require Cedarbrook to be such a place. Let's avoid a cookie cutter development in Southwest Meridian. Meridian residents do not want to become any town USA. We honor pathways, open space, amenities, and gathering spaces. We love our rural ambience. This annexation will be adjacent to rural estate properties, so we ask that you require appropriate transition and landscape buffers, minimal lot ratios, generous lot dimensions, the highest standard of open space pathways and amenities, and rural or semi-rural gateway entrances. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Any questions for Julie? Not at this time, appreciate it. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. For you being here. Mr. Chair? Yes, ma'am. Next we have Paula. Paula, I see you. Maybe Chris can unmute you. Or you can unmute yourself. Okay, you have a slides up. Chris, can you unmute Paula, please? Thank you, sir. Yeah, I was doing three screens at once. Take me one <laughs> I know, I'm trying to rush you, I apologize. Paula, thank you for being with us tonight. We appreciate it. And uh, please state your name and your address for the record and the floor is yours, ma'am. Okay, my name is Paula Connolly. I live at 3878 South Wrestler Lane. So I'm part of Stetson Estates. Um, if I can have the pictures, they came out in different orders. Can you please move them to the cows? Thank you. Good evening, commissioners and planning staff, chairman. More than ever, light agricultural practices are needed in our country and in Idaho. No matter what news source you turn on, meat shortages are occurring as meat processing plants are shutting down due to COVID-19 crisis. I don't say this to scare people. I say it because it reinforces the lifestyle that I and my neighbors wholeheartedly practice. It's what many of us have been doing for years, what we've taught our children and what we will continue to do in the future. In an effort to be a good neighbor to the houses that will be constructed behind us, I believe it is in their best interest as well as ours to limit how much we affect each other. The question becomes, how is that best done? One, on the one hand, there are property rights of the existing owners in Rock Ranch and Stetson Estates. We want to protect our open air views and our way of life, which creates noise from animals, dust from planting, plowing, and harvesting crops, smells from fertilizing, and what some would deem unsightly realities of slaughtering animals in the field. Can you, uh, next slide. Actually go two slides, please. As you can see from my pictures, agriculture isn't for everyone. And I don't want neighbors complaining about this because I won't change my ways because there is a house behind me. Of course, the landowner behind us wants to protect his property rights so he can sell his land for as much as he can. And the developer wants to operate his business to make money and build and maximize their profit. And then there's the city who would like to expand their tax base and in my opinion, that is a detriment to our agriculture in Meridian. Here's my answer. If you wanna protect the new neighbors from our dust and noise, I would ask that Toll Brothers put in a minimum of a half acre lot against any five acre parcel and one acre lot bordering anything 10 acres or bigger instead of the one third to one half lots that they have on their site plan of which I only counted four half acre lots. It seems reasonable to have a one to 10 ratio since our neighborhood is more fitting as a rural estate than our two. These are more proportional for their, excuse me, these are more proportional for their largest houses as well. They said that the largest ones would be 2,900 to 4,500 square feet. Put that on a third acre lot and it's going to be eaten up quickly. 
This affords a better visual transition in house sizes from our neighborhood to theirs. It means more density on the east side of the development, which allows a larger tax base for the city, but creates a proper transition to the existing neighbors. There will be less lots affected from our dust and noise and the landowner can still sell his property. I also want to dispute the notion in the staff report that there are no significant natural scenic or historic features that need preserving. Can you move the pictures back to the birds of prey? As you can see from my pic, excuse me, um, this statement may refer to the land, but it's the habitat the land provides that needs to be protected for the birds of prey and wildlife it supports. As you see from my pictures, we have hawks, kestrels, and owls, which we have added nesting boxes for on our property. Putting in dense populations throughout this area means less habitat for these animals. I respectfully ask that you remand this application so it can include one to 10 ratio in lot sizes against the existing properties of Stetson Estates and Rock Ranch. Perhaps even a few of those large parcels can raise chickens and gardens and will rely less on markets for hard to find products during this time of our crisis. The only other thing that I would like to highlight because it's the first time that it was seen tonight by myself was the rendition that was shown of the view shed was of the highest property within our subdivision. There are other parcels or five and 10 acre parcels that are on flat areas. And so they're not going to be looking down. In fact, directly behind my house, the elevation goes up. So those people behind me will be looking down into us and it will affect my view shed more so than the one that was shown. And that also means that every October when the cows are killed out here, somebody's not gonna be happy. And I don't know what to do about that when they're going to be looking into my backyard and I kill my cows. Thank you. I'll stand for questions. Thanks, Ms. Connolly, we appreciate it. Uh, any questions for Ms. Connolly? Thank you, ma'am, we appreciate you being here. Thank you. Mr. Chair? Yes, ma'am. Last on the list, we have Kenzie Ward. Perfect. Kenzie, we see you. Can you hear us? Uh, yeah, I wasn't planning on speaking though. <laughs> okay, if you, uh, do you, any comments or you're good? Um, I agree with what uh, Stetson Estates and Southern Random Coalition and all that, like same, same comments, same concerns with Rock Ranch as well. Can you just for the record, can you state your name and your address for the record? Just so uh, Kenzie record. Ward, 4605 South Rock Ranch Lane. Thank you so much, ma'am. We appreciate yep. you being here and being a part Thank of this. Thank you. And with that, Madam Clerk, I think we are done with the list. Is there additional folks that would like to uh, testify in this application that haven't done so already? Please raise your hand via Zoom or hit star nine and touch base with Chris, our clerk. Madam Clerk or Chris, do you see any, anybody else? Mr. Chair, nothing yet. There are quite a few people in the attendees, but okay. um, no hands yet. We'll give a couple seconds to look through that list. Is there any questions for staff uh, where we're uh, making sure that everybody has a chance to make sure they've been heard. Sonia, do you have anything that you wanted to add? I'm, I saw your uh, name pop up. Do you have anything else you want us to be aware of? Um, no, Chairman Fitzgerald, I'm fine, thanks. Okay, thank you. So Chris, I think we're good if that's, and I'll let um, the applicant close. Actually, Mr. Chair. Oh, yeah. And, and this this is more a question that will be directed to the applicant. I mean, they um, said in in the statement that essentially they had worked a lot with uh, the folks uh, in this on the surrounding properties to make sure that they were coming up with something that would be amenable to everybody. Although I'm looking at all the public comments and I'm looking at all the 
I'm just counting up the number of properties that are around it and the number of people that are um, essentially against it in one way or another on these larger, you know, farmstead, you know, development, developed properties here. Um, and I'd, I'd just like to hear something about what it is that they're willing to do. I mean, there's been a lot of talk about putting in a, a berm and a fence and all, all kinds of stuff. So I just want to make sure that that's covered as part of this. I um, would also like to hear what they have to say about increasing the the density of the lots or not, or decreasing the density of the lots, something into more, um, you know, half acre or above and how that would continue um, along not only the western side, but also the southern side of the property all the way out into Linder Road. Rena, do you want to take it from there? And I think that you switch partners. So. <laughs> Thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, I'm not screened anymore. This is Deborah Nelson. My address for the record is 601 West Bannock Street in Boise. And I am also representing the applicant this evening. And Sabrina did not go far. She may get uh, hooked in here to um, answer any further questions or jump in. Um, I just want to try to run through a few of the items that we heard from the commissioners and also from the neighbors. Um, it, we did not um, revise the application today. We simply were providing an option for the commission to have a look at uh, based on the request that we received from Sonia and her staff report. Um, the application was submitted and complete and accepted, um, but we were happy to accommodate the request from Sonia for additional housing types, and that's been presented to you as an option for your consideration. Um, we, I also wanna address, uh, we heard some comments about the schools, um, and in particular, um, the representative from the Neighborhood Association said they had met with Joe Yoakum many times. So, uh, sort of the applicant met with Joe Yoakum and made sure that he was comfortable with this development. And he said that he had no concerns. Um, in fact, all of the schools um, show that they currently have capacity. As you know, from hearing all kinds of development applications, um, they don't always all have capacity, but um, as schools reach capacity and even become over capacity is when the school district can begin looking at new opportunities for schools. They don't build uh, empty schools. And so for, in this situation where we're all under the, um, the school district did not have any concerns. Ms. Alonzo also testified about um, that we should be at the, the high end of the open space range and the low end of the density range. And that's exactly what we are. Only 10% open space is required. We're providing 20 acres at 17.5%. So it's definitely on the high end with some very high end amenities provided in there. Um, we're also at the low end of the density range, medium um, density res uh, call residential calls for three to eight. And we are under three uh, purposefully to provide that R2 zone on the western side to lower the density and to provide that transition that the neighbors are asking for. Um, there was talk of the a berm request and a fence. Uh, the applicant has worked really hard with neighbors and they, they have gone above and beyond and they have reached agreements with, with neighbors wherever they could, wherever neighbors were willing to work with them. Um, and particularly on the western um, edge of the property where it was testified that there are some flatter lots. In fact, those are right along the western, um, far western edge. And those property owners, the Robertsons and the Reinheimers have agreed with Toll to put a berm right on the middle of the property line. The fence would go on top of that to create even more height. That fence would then fall right on the property line and they were happy with that arrangement and Toll was happy to do that. And Toll was also going to provide them some landscaping for that that they would then continue to maintain. The request from some other neighbors to put a berm on our side of the property creates problems with stormwater runoff, with creating um, strips of common area, areas com that can't be maintained easily or accessed. Um, there's really no need for that because the properties that are to the southwest corner there are the ones that are elevated. They are at least 30 feet higher than the development. They also um, get the advantage of having their homes are far set back from the property lines 
and toll has agreed to double the rear setback along all of those western and southwestern properties. And so with the distance that you have from their large setbacks to, to our increased setback, these homes are two to 400 feet from each other. Um, so they're elevated and they have great distance um, apart. So a, a lower elevation berm and fence isn't gonna do much for them, but in any case, the perimeter will be fenced. Um, the, the applicant has done a, a lot of working with them about dark sky lighting, limiting two-story homes and their view sheds, all of the things that you heard from Sabrina. Uh, there was discussion of, about continued right to farm. Of course, we respect um, the neighbor's agricultural way of life to the extent they have it. Some of these properties do. Um, and Ms. Connolly discussed that. Ms. Connolly, uh, however, lives to the north of the property. Her property does not abut this neighborhood. So um, while I'm sure the neighbors would understand right to farm laws that they're coming to this, they won't be seeing the back of her property and those activities because um, she's not immediately adjacent. Um, but certainly that is an understanding that those properties exist. And that's why we've created all the transition that we did here. Um, there was concern about property values. Um, these homes are going to be high quality. Um, even the low end of the range is going to be in the high 200s, 200,000 range, all the way up to over 750,000, three quarters of a million dollars. That provides a really nice estate quality product to be next to these larger estate lots that were developed in the county, providing a high value base, creating nice tax base for the city and also providing that much needed housing. I think that Toll Brothers has really exemplified what's appropriate for this type of large scale development. They've provided this nice design. They've provided all of these great amenities, centrally located open space connected by a network of pathways. They're in a quickly developing corridor along Linder. Um, they're surrounded by other approved developments to the east that, um, but right up against this. This is the next stage uh, of development for the city and it's consistent with what you called for in your comprehensive plan. It's providing that medium density residential while also providing transition to these existing county lots. And with that, I think we'd stand for questions. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, questions for the applicant. Mr. Chair. Mr. Seal. I mean, my, my question is, 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 I mean, are you at a firm no on um, providing larger lot sizes uh, against that? I mean, I understand everything that you're saying, um, but it's kind of been a long battle for the folks that have the, the properties there. So, I mean, this isn't the first time that we've heard from them um, as far as their concerns about what would be developed, and now we're seeing what is being developed. Um, I just want to understand your position on that. Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Seal, um, the lots that are being provided here all along the western edge and along that southern edge are all over a third acre now. Um, and there are several along that corner that are over a half acre. The lots to their immediate west are those that they have, the developer has worked out arrangements for the berm and the fence. Um, properties that are further to the south under what's shown there as phase two um, have not raised objections here. And their homes are also further back and they also have the benefit of the elevation. I think you had asked earlier about um, whether the, the R2 was considered there. It, it, you know, certainly all of that was on the table when they were thinking about this. In order to meet the, the density that's requested in your comprehensive plan, um, but also to provide transition where it makes sense, I think they have done what they would. So I guess to um, more directly answer your question, I think these are the lot sizes they're proposing. Um, certainly that's within your prerogative to request additional, but I, I think it is also important to understand where they have worked out arrangements with neighbors. Um, and those that are really um, still vocal here on the corner at that Southwest corner, are the ones that have um, 300 and 400 foot um, setbacks from the homes in between their homes and the higher elevation. And so, you know, adding a different lot size below them is going, is going to have very little impact. 
Um, those are also the ones that we showed in the rendering where you could see their viewscape is not impacted. Um, and when you look at those houses that are down below, it's hard to imagine how a little wider lot at that point is gonna make much difference in that location. So we've tried to be sensitive where, that, where it makes sense to be sensitive, but then still provide the right density overall. Follow up, Mr. Chair, uh, Commissioner Castelli. Uh, Deborah, can you, with your cursor, kind of give me an idea of, of uh, uh, the berm that's being discussed, where that's going to, uh, where all that exists? Mr. Chair, I don't Mr. Think Castanelli, I'm going to attempt to turn control over. Um, otherwise, she would not have a cursor. So okay. I, Deb, let me know if you should be able to control that. Yeah, thanks, Chris. It's the, it's the far western side where it, it's straight up and down um, on the west side of phase five. Oh, Along the that. Allow us to, to share, excuse yes. me. Yes, right here. You also do have control of the presentation if you need to go to another slide that is your full presentation on the screen. So Deborah, it's going that the portion of the parcel that is um, that is uh, uh, true north and south there, uh, all those lots there in in phase five that are two. That's where the berm will go. That's right. This okay. is where there is a right up down to about this property is about where the line is at the the south end of the Reinheimers, the Reinheimers and the um, Robertson's have had discussions with the applicant and were agreeable to put a, a berm and on right on the middle of the property line or requested that and the applicant is agreeable to that and to put the fence right in the middle on that boundary. Um, down in this corner, this is um, the Lens and the Martins and it this is where there's a, a great deal of elevation change. Um, uh, so, sorry to interrupt, but I'm not seeing a, a pointer on the map as it's going. Yeah, neither am I. Okay, so it's not sharing. Um, what I've done is I've sent a request for you to be able to control it, and it says it's waiting for you. At the top of your Zoom, it makes it green. Okay. You can control the screen and move the slides. Yeah. It says, I saw your cursor. So can you see that now? I did a second ago. Disappeared. Oh, really? Okay. Is it changing the slides for you? Oh, this is a better one. Yeah, now yep, you see it, it is. Okay, and then can you see the cursor now? Yes. Yep. yes. Some yes, some no. <laughs> yes, I, I see it now. Okay. I appreciate your patience and being willing to do this virtually, by the way. <laughs> um, so I was just describing, so just in case you didn't see, so here's where there will be, um, or where the applicant has been able to work with the adjacent neighbors to put a berm and a fence on top of that. Then you come around this corner down to the Southwest. And this is where you've got a great deal of elevation. Um, and as you come, also further around, um, you've got property owners down here who have not objected or have been comfortable or willing to accept the development. Um, for example, you heard from the Radfords in some testimony that they were supportive of the development. Their only concern as of today was the, um, they didn't want the new attached product, but they were happy with it before that. So, um, you know, each, Obviously, no one is excited to have new development next to them, but I think a lot of them realize that this is what was expected and planned here. And so the other thing the developer did to be responsive to your question about working with them is looking at the, where they would put two-story homes. And we're very cognizant to limit the two-story homes down to single story where they were in the direct view shed out from the physical house from the, each of those properties. So they've tried to be very specific to the, the landowners where depending on the elevation, depending on their um, home location, um, depending on um, what their particular requests were. Um, 
and to the extent that the developer could do it, then they have they've provided that accommodation. Additional questions for the applicant? Commissioner Castello, did you have, did that give you a clear picture? That, yeah, that, that, uh, that's what I need to know. Thank you. Okay. Any additional questions? Mr. Chair, this is Chris. Just for notification purposes, you do have folks who have testified previously raising hands. Um, I know your practice is not that, but I did want you to be aware so you could address that. I appreciate that. And it's it's our practice. They get a chance to speak and then we let the applicant close. That's how we do our normal process. And we're going to stick to that tonight. So additional questions for the applicant. Any other questions or concerns? Questions, comments? Mr. Holland? Uh Mr. Chair, I think one one quick question. Uh, staff had mentioned they would like to see a tot lot or some sort of addition somewhere, and Sabrina mentioned that Coleman was, or that Toll Brothers was open to that. Do you know where that would be located at by chance, or where they would consider yeah. placing that? Yes, Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Holland, um, they will have now with the addition of this playground, they will have a playground here and then they will be adding a playground also to the larger park centrally and here Thank of course you. they already had the pool and the uh, picnic structure here and they'll be adding a playground there as well and can you uh just in regards to you guys are moving the list station to where where is that location going to go there was a suggestion on temporary location but what's that what's the plan so it is there Okay. Mr. Chairman, the, the temporary lift station will be up here in this location now, um, and that's still consistent with the city's overall uh, sewer master plan. They just had planned a lift station along here, and rather than it being down here, it is up in this location. Mr. Chair? Mr. Castanelli. Uh, Deborah, a question on the pond. Uh, since that's part of the irrigation, I'm going to assume that that will be uh, that will be dry from October to April. Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Castanelli, they are, they will have a supplemental well to keep that full. So it Otherwise, will be, it will, will be, be full year round. That is correct. Thank you. Any additional questions for the applicant before we move on and close the public hearing? Hearing none. Deborah, thank you for joining us this evening. We appreciate it greatly. Um, thank you very much. We will deliberate and see where we go from here. Uh, with that, can I get a motion to close the public hearing on this application? So no, moved. No, moved. Second. I have multiple motions in a second. <laughs> to close the public hearing on H2020-0012. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. Somebody want to leap up and take a leap off? Give us your thoughts. Uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. Seal. Um, I mean, I'll start with the positive <laughs> um, because I think the subdivision itself, I think they did, I mean, it, they were painstaking in what they have laid out as far as the transition of homes. Um, I like the amenities. I like the layout. I like the fact that it's well connected with paths and, and fits into the community path plan as well. Um, so, I mean, there's, it, it does have a lot of things going for it um, as, as far as that's concerned. I would really, really like to see this land somewhere else, um, and then I would have no problems with it. Um, the issue that I have is is the property that it butts up against, and um, the long conversations we all had about eliminating, um, you know, essentially what is what would be a rural designation. So, um, this piece of property in particular was one of them that was pointed out as far as you know what happens when a subdivision goes in against this, and our answer to that. At, the, at that point in time was, well, it will come before us and we'll have, 
control, you know, or not control, we'll have our ability to say what we'd like to see in there. Um, so as part of that, I know they've worked with some of the neighbors, but I mean, if some of the neighbors want, a, you know, a berm and a fence and lower density, then I think what's good for one neighbor is good for all neighbors, personally. So I think I'd like to see the R2 extend down further, um, simply because I think those properties are going to be around and even if they're not, that's something that can just benefit everybody, especially as um, subdivisions like this move forward and about the properties that are the five to 10 acre lots. Um, and I think that's why there's people here whose property isn't right up against the subdivision are adamant, you know, are, are opposed to, um, to seeing it develop like this because, you know, they were told that you know, we were, we would help to give them a voice if something like this comes in. Um, so for me, I just, I don't, I, I guess I, I would help to lend a voice to the people that have the five to 10 acre lots because that's what we said we would do. Um, and then we got rid of the rural designation and now we're down to, you know, three to eight houses per acre here, which is, you know, if it were my five to 10 acre lot, it's not something that I would enjoy. Thank you, sir. Additional comments? Mr. Chair. Commissioner Castanelli. Uh, I would ha have to echo uh, Commissioner Seal's comments. Uh, it was very well said. Um, I too would like to see R2 extend along the southern to southwest border there. You've got, right now it's uh, proposed to be are four up against the low density. Um, so I would like to see that transition just because that neighbor didn't comment doesn't mean that uh, that that shouldn't be done. And perhaps if a berm needs to be extended, I, I realize uh, the applicant stated that there was an elevation change there, but I would, I would uh, prefer to see that. Um, I know there was a comment earlier, I forget who made it about possibly adding some more open space. I think kind of up in the uh, northeast phase what we're looking at here phase four and phase six um, uh, there there is along that uh, the lateral up top but uh, but nothing kind of in the center of that so maybe maybe uh, some added open space in in that I, I I will reiterate to the the positives it is well laid out the you know look at the future land use map you've got the uh, the medium density sandwich in between low density. Um, it is what it is. Um, those are my comments. So two quick things on that. The Radford's property is the phase two 2021 gray property. And they did submit public comment it said they're not opposed to the Cedar Brook subdivision. Just not, they don't like the duplexes. So just for the record, that's uh, that's my understanding is that's their property right below that, if that. Okay, I still, still transitioning from R4 to the low density. It, to me, it should, a, a better transition is R2 to that. Commissioner Holland or Commissioner McCarvel, do you have any comments? Mr. Chair. Commissioner McCarvel. Um, I guess uh, I don't have quite as much heartburn uh, with the R2 over there that, that is a pretty significant um, height difference. Um, I, I just, I'm, I'm not a fan of um, the attached home product. I just think it's trying to cram too much difference into this space. But I guess my bigger concern is, is what um, all this is coming out of one entrance onto Linder Road. And Linder Road is it is just barely a farm road. I mean, it, it's paved, but there's no, it's two lanes. And I know just to the north of this, there's a there's kind of a there's a hill that blocks the view. Um, 
I guess, so the, I mean, the traffic there coming, coming at that, I mean, until that's improved, I, I'm, and I know we don't want to wait and, you know, for development out here until 2035, but uh, there's a lot of development coming here. And I'm, I was just hoping that that was going to be addressed a little sooner. Um, but all that traffic coming out onto Linder, I didn't hear anything about, um, you know, a light or any where where this is meeting up with other subdivisions. If there's a plan, planned light or stop or anything, I, I, it's probably not. It's the mid, I don't think it's the mid mile. So it just seems like a lot of traffic coming out of one spot there. And that's cul-de-sac off in a lot of places that doesn't anticipate a whole lot of other connection. But overall, I like the amenities. I like all the other the yeah, the other transition. Um, I think it, it's well thought out, especially for the um topography of what's there hey chris can you go to the plat that actually shows the connections thank you so we get one to the north eventually Up to the southwest. Oh, I guess there is two there. Yeah. Coming out on Linder. Thank you. And this one, I like the layout of this property. I think it's it was well done. I think um, with the way they did the comp plan, the way they did the future land use map, we have a, and this is the first one we're going to see like this. They put us in the middle. I mean, it's medium density residential transitioning into rural. And there's nothing in code that talks about that specifically, uh, which makes it not very fun uh, for us. So it, it's a, uh, we're going to have this dilemma no matter what gets brought to us in this realm. So I, but I understand where you guys are, the concerns that are out there. Um, I, I do think one of the things I think I'd like to see, and this is, um, is these bigger neighborhoods or maybe all neighborhoods uh, in North Meridian, a lot of the things they did were um, if they wanted something to develop in this, that's a little bit further out from where others are being developed. They brought the sewer and they also brought the, the lights. Uh, they brought traffic control. Um, and that's something that I, that out there four lane stops, um, in the next six months to a year and a half isn't going to work. Um, and so that's something I think has got to be discussed is, is offsite coordination of how we're dealing with traffic. And so Linder and, and Amity being right there, I'm not sure why ACHD is not asking them to put a, put up either put a light in or bond for it for later purposes, because that's traffic coming out of this subdivision is going to add to that. So that concerns me that we're not doing that. That happened a lot with um, a lot of the neighborhoods, the Bain Bridges, the Paramounts, those kinds of things that are happening in North Meridian. I'm not sure why we're not doing it in South Meridian. Um, so that's just an initial concern just to think about. Mr. Chair. Mr. Holland. I don't, I don't usually go last, but I kept my mouth shut this time for a while. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, I think the applicant did a really nice job in laying out the the lots and the, the way that subdivision flows and the pathways. And I like a lot of the amenities that are there. Um, it's challenging when you look at something that's 118 acres because we're used to seeing 20 acre projects that we're evaluating, not 118 acres. So I think when you look at it, it does look like a lot. But when you actually zoom in on the size of the lots, they're pretty spacious and most of them are low density, even though it might look like they're a little more dense than they, they actually are because we're looking at a bigger piece of land here. Um, so, so keeping that in mind, I think my, my concern, I would echo Commissioner McCarville's comment that 
um, having one main access in and out of the site. And it looks like there's a secondary access off of Linder. Um, but I would also echo, echo our chair's comments about um, signals at some of those major crossroads. Linder is becoming a busier road. And I know there's a community to the south that is also developing rather quickly. And a lot of people use Linder Road as another corridor to commute on. Um, there's not planned improvements from ACHD on Linder for a while, but over time it will become a road that connects kind of Meridian from the north to the south again, um, similar to what 10 Mile does and what some of those other roads do. So I don't know that I want to condition that they're responsible for the entire stoplight going in there, but it might be something worth throwing out to council to consider is, um, is there something that we should be thinking about related to signals um, that help with traffic flow near the subdivision? Because there are a few other neighborhoods around this that will be developed. My other heartburn was, I, I know when we were in the comprehensive plan process, I sat on the comp plan committee. We spent a, lo a lot of time talking about South Meridian and, and this area. Um, and we got a lot of heartburn because we knew that we were gonna face challenges where medium density faced the, the rural and how do we create those appropriate transitions. And I know we we wanted to spend more time on it to, to really make sure we had a good plan in place, but I think we did the best that we could um, in trying to make sure we had a cohesive plan that represented the interests of the, the residents and the citizens and um, opportunities for developers. So I don't think we can restrict them and say we don't want to see medium density here when it's medium density is what it's planned for. Um, I think they've done a very nice job of planning the low density transitions between them. They, it sounds like they've been talking with their neighbors. There's certainly a lot of um, a lot of comments to consider and and things that could be changed. Um, I, I don't feel too much heartburn about the about making the whole stretch of the perimeter R2. I think they've done a fairly reasonable job of providing those transitions. Um, I don't know that I agree with staff on wanting to put the attached product in there. I see where they were coming from and wanting diversity of products, but that was uh, something that just kind of made me stop and go, uh, I don't know about that one. Cause it, it's, it's going to be medium density kind of all around it um, along with low density. And I don't, there's not a lot in the comp plan to provide for that higher step up in the transition there. I don't believe, but I can't remember what's, what's kind of the North, Northeast corner of that property and what it would about to in the future. That's my comments. I, I agree with all those comments. I, I think there's, uh, I think we're probably trying to shoehorn in something that may not fit and where this is, especially in, in regards to, uh, it just, it's like an afterthought. Um, and I, I think we are going to have challenges as we start to transition and, and development's going to come this way and we've got to work out how to do it. Um, I do greatly appreciate the applicant going out and working with each of the neighbors, talking to Joe Yoakum, talking to the fire chief, talking, like making that effort. Um, I greatly appreciate that because uh, I, I think it would make all of our lives a lot easier if that forethought is brought to every project um, and we're not having to deliberate over it here. So thank you hugely for that. We appreciate it greatly. Mr. Chair. Mr. Castelli. There was uh, uh, Commissioner Carville, and I think you, you alluded to as well, um, uh, access points onto Linder. I'm only seeing the, the one. So at the edge of the I guess 45 degree angle that's right down below that. Down in the bottom? No, northeast before it takes that 45. Is that just, that's an emergency access, isn't it? That's an that's emergency Chairman. access off the shared driveway. Chairman? Yes, ma'am. Um, that is an emergency access driveway only. Okay. And there's also another emergency access south of the the main entry as well. And a pathway there. Yes. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. While we're on that subject, Sonia, do you have anything? Um, that's showing 
uh, access into the to the other side to the plant subdivisions to the east. Um, across the street to the east of Linder. Correct. I do not in my slides, but I believe the applicant had some slides that showed the overall area and the developments that have been approved out there. Um, not sure exactly which slide it was, though. That looks like it. Yeah. yeah there you go. Mr. Casanelli, did you have a follow up there? Yeah, I can see. I just, yeah, there, there just, there doesn't seem to be any uh, access directly. It doesn't look like that's uh, being developed directly across the street. There's a small parcel that's yeah not being developed, so that doesn't that doesn't line up or connect up. So I was, you know, I was curious about that. So what are we thinking? Do I parcel it out? Is there where I, I got the R2 piece along the southwestern border? I think that's was there discussions around that. Um, Commissioner Castaneda or Commissioner Seal, do you have a feeling on the multifamily attached product zero lot line up to the northwest, whether that is appropriate or not? Mr. Commissioner, I agree with Commissioner Holland. I, I think that was, it was a good attempt to throw in what was requested by staff, but looking at it, it, it just, I don't know that it fits. I think there's enough diversity in, in, in what's already in there. Um, you know, and again, I think if they're going to do a berm with trees and a fence along part of it that borders that, they should do a berm. Um, you know, a fence and, and trees along all of it and make it all R2 and, and you know, come back with the biggest lot size they're willing to give at this point. Um, you know, and again, that just comes from this transition from rural into this specific piece and knowing that, um, you know, whatever is approved or disapproved here, we're, we're going to have to fight this battle, you know, more times. <laughs> Um, as as this land is developed. So um, personally, I'm just looking to kind of put a stake in the ground for, for what we are expecting them to do for, um, you know, the larger estates that are there. Appreciate that. And I, I, so I, I agree on the, uh, on, on those attached units that I, I don't feel that that's, uh, that that's needed okay. but again is exactly what uh, commissioner seal set up i would prefer um r2 and and uh at least a berm on that angle piece if if that's necessary there until you get to that the the height variance then a berm would not be necessary i think the height is on the angle on and that 45 before yeah. it shapes yep the, the heights on the angle and then it shapes around flattens back out that's the 400 the 350 to 400 foot with the with the higher um, elevation change and so you can correct me if I'm incorrect there but that was my understanding from the applicant Um, Chair, I, I am not sure, so I will not confirm what the applicant said. <laughs> Thank you. So thoughts, folks? So, so far to confirm what I've heard from everybody, and I want to make sure we're not missing something, and I, I don't necessarily have to be the one that makes the motion. I just want to recap what we've all said. Um, I think the consensus was to remove the attached product that's on the northeast corner and return that to single family. Yeah. Yes. Seeing the dots. Yes. 
another consideration would be to ask council to consider whether there should be some funding put towards a future intersection stoplight at Amity and Linder. Yeah. I think, Mr. Chair. Yes, ma'am. Correct, somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't I see where the actual, the intersection at Amity and Linder was supposed to be a roundabout here, like in- Oh, is that where the- five years? Sonia, can you- I know 10 mile in Amity is gonna be a big roundabout, but I thought there was a smaller one for That's Amity. Hard. They're doing a lot out there, so that wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. I guess my con my concern was more the condition of Linder itself. I mean, they've they've gone out there, you know, it's farm roads, and they've gone in and they've tried, you know, they patched them and done the sewer lines and stuff, and it's all patched and rough and just as this all develops, I would I'd like to see council do whatever they can to push something forward to at least improve the condition of that road. One more quick question to staff is, oh, sorry, Commissioner McCormick. Yeah, I mean, it's always ACHD's issue, but I mean, what are we gonna do to move them along? Push that forward a little bit instead of waiting till 2035 with all this going in. And there's no way they're waiting until 2035 out there, by yeah. the way, there's no way. Sorry, Commissioner uh, Holland, but I'm, you got cut off. I apologize. That's okay. I didn't mean to cut anybody else off. Um, question to staff. I don't remember on that section of Linder. Is there already a median turn lane that would access into this neighborhood? Um, Chairman, Commissioner Holland, no. It's just a rural two-lane roadway. Follow up to that. Are they required to add a turn lane as part of this development? I believe there was a requirement. Um, it be in the ACHD staff report if you'd like me to look. I just couldn't remember. I know I skimmed through it, but I, I couldn't remember what was required there. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure there was a turn lane required. I believe a turn lane was required. And they also required additional right there were additional recommendations along Linder to provide for um, as far as how the sidewalks were going to be defined and the setbacks were going to be drawn. So I don't know if that helps Commissioner McCarville, but um, I, I think there were some conditions in there to help with Linder Road a little bit. Yeah, I, Mr. Chair. Go right ahead, ma'am. Yeah, I, I think in general, I'm in support of the overall design and the amenities and everything else. I just, I was, uh, not in favor of the uh, attached home product up there. I just think it's too much trying to cram in too many different things. So I think the last big thing that we were, that we were all discussing was the R2 that's around the property line and if there was any modifications that we wanted to request there. I know Commissioner Castanelli and Commissioner Steele were sounding like you were leaning towards wanting to have some additional buffering or some additional lot ch lot changes, but I wanted to stop and summarize what everyone else was thinking. I felt okay with what's there, but I'm not opposed to having something else in there too if the commission feels like that's what we need to do. I, I, I'd like to see the, you know, again, uh, along the, the west and south boundaries uh, bordering the larger estates, I'd like to see the you know, R2 along that entire stretch, as well as, um, you know, berm tree shrubs. I, again, this is just, you know, this is something that um, the people that had the larger estates asked what could be done if we didn't keep the rural designation, what could be done when something like this happens against them. So, um, you know, again, our answer was, well, we can help modify that in the future. So. Um, we have a lot of people that are asking for that. We're going to have people ask for it in the future, and I think it would be wise of us to recommend that to, to the city if, if we go through with an approval on this.
Mr. Chair. Commissioner Carl. Um, didn't we have, we, I think we had the testimony from the resident that lives up there. You can see it's one house and I think it's, they were okay with the R2 or the, um, what was going in next to them. And I think that house has been there a lot longer than the other, those big five acre lots going down the west side. Yeah, that was the Radfords. Yeah. Their, their comment was they're not opposed to the subdivision. Yeah. Uh, we understood it to be single family home. He's not allowed townhome or duplexes. Yeah, because I think that property was quite a bit up on a hill. So I, I understand where Commissioner Steele is going in his thoughts. I, I think what cha is challenging is we can't always see elevations when we're meeting with these things. And so having, I mean, putting things in place that are going to be of no use to the people that are asking for it, I, and, or yeah, people that are not asking for it, I, I don't want to just ask the applicant to spend money because it's, because we're putting a, a line in the sand. Um, so I, I get the balance. But I, I maybe there's a compromise between the R2 and the berming because I think I don't want to take it. I don't want to leave out the fact that they did go meet with all those applicant or all those residents and say, what do you want us to do? And so they are taking the initiative to go talk to those folks and they are putting a berm where it's necessary um, along the agreement they've had on the, that Eastern or Northeast border. Um, so I, it's, it's a balancing act for me a little bit. I understand what you're saying. I understand your point exactly. Um, just, I'd love to have an elevation so I could say that there's already uh, some of the mitigation already taking place, but that would be my thoughts there. I can't look at you and throw things or something. It, when I'm at the dais, I can like show someone or do something. I can't make a motion. So, just joking. I mean, I could attempt to throw one out there. I just don't know if, we, if we're ready or not. Yeah. If anybody else wants anything else in there. You want me to try? <laughs> All right, yeah, I'm going to throw ahead. it out. Um, after considering all staff, applicant, and public testimony, I move to recommend approval to City Council file number H-2020-0012 as presented in the staff report for the hearing date of May 7th, 2020, um, with the following modifications that the applicant would add the playground structures as described in the um, planning and zoning meeting that they would remove the attached product that was presented for the northeast corner of the site and return that to single family homes. Um, that council would consider whether or not there should be some funding or partnership towards the future intersection improvements of Amity and Linder. And um, that they would, as the applicant mentioned, they were going to have increased um, widths behind the homes to create that transition on the south and west perimeter and that they would fulfill that. <laughs> I'm not sure how to word that. <laughs> second. Okay, I have a motion and a second uh, to recommend approval of file number H2020-0012 is there additional discussion before I call for a roll call vote? Mr. Chair? Mr. Castanelli. Could I ask uh, Commissioner Holland to clarify that last? Uh, <laughs> you didn't like my language there? No. Well, can, what I was trying you to do draw, they you mentioned, draw it? Yeah, well, they. I know that uh, Deb Nelson at the end was talking about how they had an additional buffer zone that they were um, putting in for all of the homes on the boundary that was beyond what code required and i can't remember what the number was she used that's why i stumbled there because she gave a number of how far apart the houses would be yeah. um can anyone help me out there additional setbacks as described by the applicant 
Okay, let's modify it to say um, that all the homes on the southern and west perimeter would have the additional setbacks as described by the applicant. Yeah, Deb said 30 feet. 30 feet. Thank you, Bill. Does the seconder concur with the adjusted motion? Second concurs. Okay. Any other additional comments or con uh, discussion before we vote? Okay, Madam Clerk, can you call the roll, please, ma'am? Yes, Mr. Chair, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Holland? Yes. Commissioner Seal? No. Commissioner McCarville? Yes. Commissioner Pitzer? He's gone. Oh, sorry, I apologize. Commissioner hey. Casanelli? No. Commissioner Fitzgerald? Aye. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Deb and the team, we appreciate all the input uh, from the community and from the Toll Brothers team. We appreciate you guys being here tonight. Um, with that, we have one more motion. Mr. Chair, I move we adjourn. Second. Thank you. Motion and a second to adjourn the meeting. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you all. We greatly Thanks, appreciate everyone. your work. Hope Thank you guys. Have a good night. Thank you. Have a good evening. See you guys. Bye.